Hello, everyone. Um, so I'd like to speak with you for a few minutes about energy systems. And I'm showing a few here. I'm sure all of you are aware of the importance of these technologies in our daily lives for transportation, heat, electricity. In fact, most of us in the room probably took some combination of the automobile and the airplane to get here to Camden. And these technologies have improved over the years um, to become rather cheap. They work well. Um, but there is an issue with them, as we know, which is that they um, emit carbon dioxide, um, large amounts of carbon dioxide, based as they are on fossil fuels. And we have this climate change problem, as we heard about yesterday. And you can do a back of the envelope calculation. I won't do that now. Um, but you can do it to show that uh, to meet commonly cited climate targets, we have about 50 years to transition away from these carbon intensive fossil fuels. So that's a major transition that has to happen in about 50 years. Is this possible? Well, let's think for a moment about how we came to Camden. One option for me could have been to, to sail here from Boston. That's where I live. Um, and for those of us that took a little trip on the schooner Appledore a couple days ago in the bay here, uh, we might suggest that that is a more enjoyable way to travel. But of course, we can't expect that everyone will take these alternative modes of transport and opt for alternative technologies all the time. What people want mostly, um, what most people want most of the time, um, are technologies that are convenient, fast, cheap, and also clean. And we have some of those options that we can start using immediately that we are starting to use at a small scale. Um, but to meet this transformation challenge uh, that I mentioned, uh, we need more technologies. There's another challenge here, which is that technologies typically take quite a while, several decades, to go from the lab to wide-scale adoption. One of the questions we're working on in my lab is to, in my research group, is to think about how we can speed that process up. So we're trying to combine, uh, we're, we're combining knowledge of materials, knowledge of energy systems with computational models to try to do that. One approach we take is to combine simple materials with more advanced models. So you can think of this as using low-tech materials but higher-tech information processing methods. One of the cells that we work with can actually be made from raspberry juice and a material titanium dioxide that can be found in some toothpastes. And the way, this is a picture of the cell, it's called the disensitized solar cell. And the important thing here is that it's made up of four different components. You have your catalyst, your electrolyte, your semiconductor, your dye. And there's lots of ways nowadays that we can tune each of these components. We have a lot of options for each of these. So you can think of this as a puzzle. And there are lots of different options for each of these pieces. We want to find the combination that will work really well, that will be cheap, where the technology will work really well. But we don't have a lot of time. So in my lab, we're working on and finding ways to accelerate that process. Another approach that we take is to try to program technologies, program into that puzzle the ability to improve very quickly. So you can think of this as constructing a puzzle where the pieces don't have to fit together perfectly. I'm showing a little schematic here. And the idea here is that that makes the prep problem, we may be able to make faster progress with that sort of approach. So we want to minimize the dependencies between these different components of the solar cell. Um, two other areas that we work in and, and sort of ideas that, that we're working on, which I don't have time to discuss in detail, um, are the idea of trying to tailor your technologies to particular contexts. So if you think of your solar cell or a battery, for example, it doesn't need to have the entire set of properties in one cell or one technology that would allow it to be used in all sorts of different contexts. We can try to tailor the technology to the context. And um, I think there are ways, I can't say too much about it for time and, and other reasons, but I think there are ways that we can do that by really understanding the context and also these technological constraints. In a sense, we can find ways to make the technology design problem easier. Another problem that we work on is this difficult issue, which is that the background environmental state is changing over time. 
and our technologies that we're designing will presumably interact with that state and affect it. Um, and you have uncertainty as to how that background environmental state will change. So we're trying to take all of that into account and um, bring knowledge um, and the insight we're getting from our models into the early stages of technology design. So in sum, we're working on trying to accelerate the development of these clean technologies using knowledge of materials and physics and environmental systems, combining that with computational models. Thank you. Thank you.